Hello YouTube! Yeah, it's been a while, hasn't it? <laughs> oh dear, dear, dear. We've had some fun times since I last put a video up. Um, but a big bust up with Father Christmas because he didn't bring me either of the two lenses I asked him for. Um, I've not been very well. I'm still not very well. Doctor's got me on this weird steroid powder inhaler thing for COPD. That's chronic obstructive pulmonary disorder, uh, for those of you who don't know what COPD is. And uh, yeah, this is what comes of being a bit of a bearded fat git and something of a desk jockey. Um, but for all you YouTube subscribers out there who aren't members of my Patreon, um, I haven't abandoned my Patreon members. Um, there's the last video I put up on YouTube uh, for me sins, 22nd of December. But we've put all these videos up uh, for me uh, Patreon members. So uh, there you go. Um, my Patreon members haven't been abandoned. Um, but, you know, it is what it is, isn't it? So, anyway, what do we want to talk about today? Um, I get asked in the comments quite often about Andy, can you do a video on selections? Um, <laughs> and the answer is no, not really. I can do a few videos or a few different videos on selections because, oh, there's so many different criteria that you can use um, for selections. And, you know, selections, alpha channels and masks in Photoshop are all one and, one and the same thing. So... You know, I mean, it's it's a very diverse and complex subject, which is virtually impossible for somebody like me to actually do justice to in a short video. But, having said that, what we're going to do today is look at um, a couple of um, wildlife shots. Now, both of these shots, both this one and this one, I... Um, are off a Canon 1DX, the original Mark One, um, so it's got a bit of a predilection for noise, and uh, you know it is what it is. If I come back to this first one here, you can see this one's done at 800 ISO, and this one's at, is at 8000 ISO. Why it's taking so long to load up, I have no idea. But well, there we go. So, I'm going to come back to this first shot, and um, if you remember over on my Patreon um, channel, you will have access to these raw files, and if I just pull up the finder, and I go to my desktop, you will be able to see this, uh, or gain access to this double process halo noise control folder on my um, Dropbox, so in the description um, on the Patreon page and in the email, you'll have a download link. So go and download it and take both the RAW files and the XMP files into your Lightroom catalogue, and then you'll be at the same starting point as me in this video. Okie dokie. Right, so we're going to address a problem with haloing and also uh, noise differentiation inside of Lightroom by using Photoshop. And the single, simplest, most useful um, facet of processing inside of Photoshop using Lightroom, and that is double processing. And I do keep banging on about double processing, especially to my Patreon members, because it is so damn simple and so damn useful. So what we're going to do is just do these two uh, very similar, but at the same time, totally different images using double processing in Lightroom. And then how we work the um, image up inside of Photoshop. And it's all really super, super simple. And it's been made super, even more super simple uh, with some of the new features inside of Photoshop. So, first of all, what's the problem with this image? Well, you know, with a fit to screen view, there isn't a blooming problem, is there? But, of course, if we take it up to a 100% view and take it over into the develop module, 
and there we go so it's plenty sharp enough it's got Lightroom's default sharpening on it no masking no noise reduction and I mean it's hard for you to see uh, on YouTube with a bit of video compression but it's slightly overly sharp but the problem lies <laughs> with the edges and if you look at the edges you can see we've got a slight darkening on the inside edge uh, where the bird is but we've got this blooming white halo on the outside edge of the bird no matter where we look you see we've got this white halo here and white halos are always more predominant in an image uh, than dark halos and so you know i mean white haloing is a pain in the backside and if i just come out to a slightly uh, smaller view let's go out to a 400 percent view um you can just see this white halo around everywhere and it makes everything look super super over sharp we come back up to 800 percent and let's just scoop down a little bit and we can see that we've got this white halo everywhere as i said now what can we do to control this white halo inside of lightroom well not a lot not really because if i use the masking slider to take the sharpening off and let's just slide it along you can see the masking slider is starting to take the noise out of the blue sky uh, but it's not doing anything for the white halo and of course if we take it too far then we start masking out the sharpening on the detail in the actual subject this white tail seagull here so masking um, isn't going to do the job for us is detail going to do the job for us no because you can see we're taking detail out of the sky we're taking detail out of the bird at the same time and the white halo is sort of getting a little bit dimmer but it's not getting any smaller okay radius can we do anything with that no not really radius if we bring it all the way down we'll make it a little bit smaller but it won't take it away and let's have a look at a mount and if we take that out oh look at that you see the white halo is gone so the very first thing i'm going to do is double process this image in photoshop so what we fundamentally got to do is with all the sharpening turned off we right click on the image and we go edit in and we go edit in photoshop 2022 and we'll just wait for photoshop to open up and there we go so this here is a soft unsharpened image if we now come back to lightroom and we go and double click on sharpening or double left click on sharpening and then to me it's a little tiny little smidge over sharp so i'm going to bring that down to around about 28 to 30 but we've still got the white halo but it's sharp so if we go into it at 100 percent it's sharp okie dokie so now we've got some sharpening on the image we will do the second process and go edit in photoshop 2022 and there it is so if i hit v for my move tool and then i left click hold drag go over to the tab for the unsharpened image keep holding that left mouse button drag hold down the shift key and then let go of the left mouse button i've now transferred a duplicate of the sharpened image into a new layer and you can see it's sharp there it is and if i turn it off we've got an unsharp layer underneath now comes the critical bit because what i want to do is i want the nice clean zero white fringing out of this background layer uh, but i want to see the sharpened bird over the top of it okay so how do you think i will go about doing that it's really simple i've got to make a selection of either the bird or the sky now then 
here's your problem. And this is where you've got to start thinking about things logically. Yep. I want to make a selection of the sky or the bird, but I need to make it in the unsharpened layer because the unsharpened layer does not contain that white fringe because that white fringe has got a little bit of blue in it. Okay, so we can either use a color range selection or we can basically just go to select and select sky and just let the new um, AI do its little thing and then this selection is the sky you can see we've got the marching ants around the edges of the image as well as around the edges of this subject so all I'm going to do now is activate that sharpening layer or that sharp image layer make it the working layer by clicking on it and then just add that selection as a mask but of course the bird as you can see in the mask i should actually make that bigger so you can see what's going on uh panel options -dum -bum 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 -bum. and we'll go for a bigger thumbnail and we'll click ok there we go so now you can see so we've got a black bird in a white sky what we need to do is to invert that so now we can't see the sharpened sky but we can see the sharpened bird all right black conceals white reveals so fundamentally this mask is that selection that sky selection that we've just done it's just a different interpretation of exactly the same thing and if we take the image up to 100%, and you can see the subject is still sharp. We've got all the fine edge detail. We've got that little sticky out feather there. We've got all the fringing on the feathers on the backs of the, on the back of the uh, bird's legs. But you'll notice we haven't got any white fringing. And if we look at the mask, in other words we look at the selection that we made by out clicking on the mask you can see how smooth that mask is but it's quite varied if we go to it at a hundred uh, more than a hundred percent you can see that the edge is soft it's blurry and fundamentally it's feathered but here's the thing, when people start wondering about selections, how do I make these nice smooth selections? Well, you've just seen me make one. But people seem to think that a, a, a good selection has got a very, very hard edge. And it can't have a smooth edge, which is very, very hard, because at the end of the day, the image is made up of pixels. And if you don't believe me, these little squares, if I go to view, show, and I go to pixel grid, each one of those little squares represents one pixel. And here's the thing about a pixel, you can't split it. Every single pixel in the image has to have exactly the same tonal value. It has to have the same color value you can't split a pixel in half and have half of it one color and half of it the other it just doesn't work like that even if you make a selection using the most accurate selection tool available to you on the planet which is the pen tool in photoshop with all its beautiful smooth bezier curves the minute you turn those bezier curves into a selection they become stair stepped because they've either got to be black or they've got to be white one of the two so you will never be able to split a pixel so your selection edges will never be super smooth you cannot split pixels okie dokie so i'm just going to go view and show and undo the visibility of the pixel grid uh, because I don't want to see that damn thing. And um, we'll just out-click on the mask to come back to a visual view. 
And so there you go. So we've got a nice, super sharp subject and a really nice, well, relatively smooth sky. Um, if you were to do a print off this, the noise and apparent grain in the sky here would not be apparent in the slightest. But, you know, if I turn that mask off by shift clicking on it, bang, you can see the white halo off, on, off, on, halo, no halo. Yeah, okay. So that's that image sorted. So, if I now come back to Lightroom and we go to this 8000 ISO image, again of a white tailed sea eagle, but you see, some of you might be saying, well, Andy, that previous picture was a piece of cake because it was a flat blue sky behind the subject. And yes, you're quite correct. Um, but you're quite wrong in your assumption that it was a poor illustration. Um, basically because there was so much contrast between the subject and the background. Therefore, the haloing showed up a lot more predominantly in that image than it shows in this image, where fundamentally the background and the subject are exactly the same colour palette and pretty much the same tonal value. Um, the only thing that's separating the bird from the background is the degree of sharpness or the degree of focus. All right, so the reason you, you must always be prepared to modify uh, the way you work is because each individual image will demand a different approach to this self-same problem. And of course, we've got the self-same problem here in so much as huh, slightly different. What I want to do is keep the sharpness of the bird, but of course, I don't want to have this super noisy background. So, I mean, yeah, we could run this image straight away through Topaz Denoise and we will get a perfectly acceptable image out of it. But, you know, let's just try work it. I mean, because Topaz Denoise actually costs money. Um, not a lot of money, and it's good value for money. Um, but it's, you know, I mean, it's just another tool in our armoury. What we want to do is to try and negate the noise in the image even before we run it through Topaz um, simply to get some differentiation in the image so we don't have to use too much of the, say, the sharpening inside the Topaz denoise because it, it sort of, to me, it's a little bit on the aggressive side. But anyway, let's just see and look at this image. Because we already know that the sharpening in Lightroom is a bit of a killer, let's just take all the sharpening off this image. Okay. Now we can see that the noise has been reduced quite considerably. Let's go and add a little bit of noise reduction to the image as well. All righty. And you can see it's not doing a great deal. Not a lot. But what we'll do is we'll right click and we'll go edit in, edit in Photoshop 2022. And so fundamentally what we're going to do is the same sort of workflow, but using a slightly different methodology. Okay, so this is our soft image. And then we're going to come back to Lightroom. And all I'm going to do is put the sharpening back on. All right. Now, if we blow this image up to, what, 800%, okay, and let's come and have a look over the top of the bird's head. Now, because the tonality of the background is actually fundamentally darker than the image, the dark haloing, there's no apparent white haloing, but we've got a dark halo instead. Um, because the background is actually darker 
than the subject in this particular area. We will have white halos somewhere, probably around the feet or whatever. So we've got a potentially a mixed halo problem. And all we're going to do, we're not going to do anything fancy. There's no jiggy pokery. There's no um, really super delicate adjustment here or going to happen here. Except I might just pull that sharpening down just a little bit to around about the mid 20s. Okay, and all I'm going to do is right click, edit in, edit in Photoshop 2022, and we'll go and do a double process again. It is really, really, really super, super simple. Um, so let's come back to Photoshop, and here it is. So this is the sharp image. Let's just take it up and check. Yep, that's the sharp image. And we will bring that out to fit to screen view. And again, we'll hit V to pull up the move tool, and we'll move the sharpened image into a new layer above the soft image. And hold on the shift key, let go of the left mouse button, there we go. So we've got sharp on top, let's rename that, we'll go sharp, okie dokie, and we'll take the image up to 100% so we can see, there's the sharp image, turn it off, or there's the sharp image layer, turn it off, and now we've got a much noise reduced, softer image underneath. And again, we are going to make this soft layer our active layer. I'm gonna go out to a fit to screen view so we can see what's happening. Now, remember what we did. We went on the previous image, we went select sky. Right now, under what context does it address, call things sky? Yeah, it looks for areas of low frequency detail versus high frequency detail, which the sky was very super low frequency detail in the previous shot, but it had a massive color contrast. Yeah, with the subject because the subject was the same color as it is here, but the sky was blue. Now the sky selection won't get do us any favors whatsoever because it can see a difference in um, the frequency of detail but it can't see any color contrast because the background is the same color palette as the actual subject itself so that's not going to work so we will select deselect and so what fundamental criteria can we use to select the subject well we could try select subject but it's still not going to work so let's just give it a give it a blast it's worked to a degree but it, there's lots of gaps um it's not selecting um in between the feathers because there's no tonal variation and very little contrast variation in there so again let's go select deselect and let's try select focus area. Mm. Let's see what happens now. Because now it's going to try and define or ascertain the difference between what's sharp and what isn't. And bear in mind, we are working in the soft image layer. Because that soft image layer doesn't contain any haloing, be it white haloing or dark haloing or at least the dark haloing contained in this soft image layer is at a minimum. So just on auto, output into a selection with the soften edge option checked. That's not looking too bad at all. So we'll say, right, okay, output it to a selection. And there you go. I mean, we missed one little bit of the feather there. And so what we could do is we could undo it and go and reselect it. So let's go to select, deselect. Let's go back, select, focus area. And let's just see if we can get it to pull things together a little bit better. So we can add to the selection. You can see because we've got the add to selection active. And uh, we can just click there and see if that makes any difference. That's pulled a bit back in. Just click on the end again. And there we go. We've got it. 
So now we'll go OK. And all we'll do is come up onto our sharp image layer, activate it, and click the masking icon at the bottom of the layers panel to add that as a mask. So now we've got a white bird, okay? So we can see the sharp bird in this sharp layer, but we can't see the background because the mask is black. So we can't see the sharpened background. So let's take the image up to 100%. And let's have a look and let's turn the mask off by holding down the shift key and clicking on the mask. So there's our relatively noisy background and there's our relatively smooth background. Okay, dokey. So fundamentally, we've achieved the same result, the result we were looking for. Because if I go up here, you can see we've got no dark edge over the top and we've got no artifacting where that dark edge was. And so, you know, I mean, if I just shift click, there you can see the dark edge because we've turned the mask off and you can see we've got some little color artifacting going on in there. And so if we just shift click again to reactivate the mask, I'm now going to go to layer okay and we'll go to flatten image and then i'm going to duplicate this layer all right and we'll now come out to a fit to screen view and with this background copy layer active we will go to filter topaz labs topaz denoise ai yes 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 i know we're invoking a topaz plugin big deal okay and so all i'm going to do just let this update itself and um, i'm in the low light setting and um, with a remove noise value of six and then enhance sharpness value of zero a recover original detail value of zero and a color noise reduction value of zero and all i'm going to do is click apply and then uh, here we get our processing image time remaining and so i'll shut up and uh, i'll pick this up when it's finished processing and there we go so let's take this back up to a hundred percent and we've got a super sharp image with a super smooth background now to me it's a little bit too smooth so i would actually probably turn it down to about 60 percent just to let a little little smidge of noise creep into that background because that level of noise isn't going to print and it just makes everything look a little bit more balanced because there is noise within the subject but you can't really see it okay and where the heavy noise was in these darker areas um topaz denoise um really does sort of make them go a little bit too smooth and a little bit too plasticky looking so you know sort of around 66 percent opacity would make me very happy with this image and so you know there we go so that's two images yeah um one with a very contrasted background one with a virtually zero contrast background um processed inside of Photoshop using double processing in Lightroom and really such simple techniques. And we've got two really, really cool, highly saleable, highly printable images out of those two um, raw files, which did leave something to be desired in the terms of haloing and noise um, inside of Lightroom. So the double processing bit in Lightroom just facilitates very simple, easy processing over in Photoshop. Uh, so I'm sure you'll agree. Uh, the two images look far better than they would do if they'd been produced in Lightroom only. So there you go, guys and gals. Hope that's proved interesting. Hope that's proved useful. I always like to try and show you simple ways, really super simple, dead easy ways of 
doing the sort of job that you want and there's some of you i know who want to know how to separate hair and things like that and you've always got to remember that thing i showed you uh, when we were at super eye magnification on this image and that is the simple fact that no matter what you do with uh, or how you make a selection it's always going to be made up on its edges of squares that are of a solid tone or colour. Uh, there is no way you can get round stair step jaggies. You just can't because you cannot split pixels. And all anti aliasing does is actually give you this blurred edge here. So, there you go, guys and girls. As I said before, hope you found that useful. Hope you found it interesting. And until the next time, um, stay safe, stay well, keep taking the pictures. And uh, I'll speak to you very soon. So, toodaloo.